This may be just my opinion, but the game's built-in tutorials are excellent, even though they absolutely do not explain everything. They are short, and you should definitely watch them, even if you think you don't need to, as they explain some rocketry basics, as well as the fundamentals of building, launching, and controlling your rockets. What I'm going to do here is give you five things the tutorials don't mention to get you quickly building better rockets. In the VAB, down towards the bottom, are three very important buttons. The middle one shows you where the center of mass of your vehicle is. Think of this as the pivot point around which your rocket will turn. When a force is applied to your rocket that is not centered on the center of mass, it will cause the rocket to want to turn. For example, to the left of the center of mass button is the center of thrust. This shows the combined thrust vector of all engines on the bottom stage. You want this vector lined up with the center of mass of the vehicle. If the thrust is unbalanced, your rocket will want to turn in the opposite direction of the imbalance. That is why using symmetry tools when putting on radial engines is so important. To the right of the center of mass button is the center of pressure. This shows the center of the combined aerodynamic forces on your rocket. This is completely irrelevant in the vacuum of space, but you definitely want to pay attention to it as your vessel ascends through the lower portion of the atmosphere. A vessel with a center of pressure right on top of the center of mass will tend to pivot freely and may be difficult to control. When moving through the atmosphere, a vessel will want to orient so that the center of pressure will be behind the center of mass. For this reason, we want to bring this blue ball closer to the bottom of the rocket. This is most easily accomplished with tail fins. For this rocket, I'm going to add some extra small stabilizers that can be found under the aerodynamics tab. These typically don't have to be big, though feel free to make them bigger if you find your rocket loses control or step up to control surfaces that add even further attitude control. And don't forget, the centers of mass and pressure will change as the rocket expends fuel, and especially when staging. Make sure to check the aerodynamic stability of any stage that will be flying in the lower portion of the atmosphere. Towards the bottom right, we have a button called the Engineer's Report. The number we're interested in is the thrust to weight ratio. This gives the launch thrust to weight of your rocket. If it's less than one, your rocket isn't going to get off the ground, but if it's too high, it may make your rocket difficult to control. A launch thrust to weight in the 1.3 to 1.5 range is typically what to shoot for. If it is currently too high, right click on a bottom stage engine to bring up the parts manager and bring down the thrust limiter slide of that engine until the thrust to weight is in the range we want. If these engines were installed using the symmetry tool, all the sliders will change together so that the thrust will remain balanced. Let's press the shift key to take a closer look at two of our Methalox engines the LV-T30 Reliant and the LV-T45 Swivel. These engines are very similar with small differences in their masses and thrusts, but note the swivel has an extra section, engine gimbal. A gimbaled engine can swivel back and forth changing the direction of the thrust vector. This provides a further means of turning your rocket that you can take advantage of. However, this doesn't come without a cost, as the gimbaled swivel is heavier than the Reliant while providing less thrust. You will have to decide for yourself whether this cost is worth it in each of your builds. This vessel makes use of the Mark I Tin Can Command Pod. Pressing Shift brings up the further details revealing a section called Reaction Wheel. The reaction wheel is internal to the command pod and provides 5 kilonewton meters of additional turning force. You will find reaction wheels of varying strength in most of the command pods and probe bodies. Reaction wheels are especially useful in space, but also add stability to rockets during ascent. For example, this rocket's only means of attitude control are the reaction wheels in the command pod. 
That said, you can add on additional reaction wheels to your vessel for even more turning force. These can be found in the stabilizer section under the utility tab and come in a wide variety of sizes and strengths. If you keep these five ideas in mind during your build, you will build rockets that are much easier to control. Just to go over them one last time, the thrust vector must line up with the center of mass, the center of pressure must always be behind the center of mass, tweak the thrust limiter on your engine so the launch thrust to weight ratio is between 1.3 and 1.5, use gimbaled engines if you need additional control, and finally, you can add additional reaction wheels. This is especially useful on larger rockets. Now that we can build a nice stable rocket, next episode I'm going to be adding some techniques beyond the in-game tutorials for getting that rocket reliably and efficiently into orbit. I hope to see you then.